And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. Our friend Augie Nost returns today. Augie is an author, on-air personality, seasoned aircraft pilot, hypnotherapist, UFO researcher, and cosmic explorer who also hosts a weekly at the Universal Consciousness show. Augie, welcome back. It's great to have you. Well, it's fun to be here. And uh, gosh, I think I sent you it. The wrong bio because the universal consciousness show I'm not doing anymore. We are doing broadcast team alpha now. So oh. I'm so, so sorry I sent you the wrong bio. That, that just I mean, I, I, I prove every day that I'm human, I guess. So here we are. <laughs> That's perfectly all right. And it may be my fault because we've had you on a few times and I've just kind of combed through my old shows to find out what I said about you previously and put something together so well we work it out <laughs> but i'm here i've got my hot tea and i'm ready to talk to you you got your coffee today no i forgot no coffee yeah well, that's, that's okay we're still gonna ha- we're still gonna have a great show even besides that yes we haven't chatted in a while but we had this big ufo conference in mexico which they displayed an alien in front of the world. What information do you have to share about that? Well, uh, I know very little about the conference itself, but it was presented to the government of Mexico. And it was determined that it was the real thing. And uh, I think what create a little bit of confusion about it was that in the past there were some actual aliens looking exactly like this one that was fake there were people in south america that made up these things from animal parts and other things but the one that was presented to the government that was the real thing because they also showed the x-rays and they see the bone structure they see the the three big eggs inside of the stomach cavity and uh, these things were they were the x-rays showed that there is no way that this could have been faked so it is now out in the open and the whole world now is recognized. I mean, even the people that had not believed in UFOs or aliens before, they're starting to ask themselves, wow, the government is saying now that this is probably true, so maybe they should believe it too. And it is spreading like wildfire across the globe because people are finally starting to wake up to something that you and me is known about since we were that tall, you know. But Mm. it is coming. And my question to the world and government is, why now? I have a question that I um, don't ask a lot, and that is, what is the purpose for the now? Could it be that they are allowing this information to come out so that people will accept the fact that, yes, aliens are real. And now NASA is saying that they have seen something like 50-some huge objects coming in, entering the solar system. And they are saying they might be alien spacecrafts. So why is all this coming out now? Could it possibly be, could it be that we are being led to some future event that most of us have heard of as a fake alien invasion? What do you think? I think anything is possible. I am surprised that they have decided that this alien is real because in the beginning there was so much ridicule about it 
especially making fun of it, saying that it looks like the alien from E.T., but I didn't realize it has come out and, and been certified that it's real. Yeah, they, they, show, the, they show the x-rays on it, and the, I, I saw the x-rays, and they, they looked like they were connected and right away, and you know, they, this looks real. Mm, you amazing. mentioned E.T., the face of E.T. looked kind of like this right. corpse. Who do you think, and maybe why do you think that they made E.T. look that way? Maybe they knew something. Maybe it was preparation. Yeah. For the future. And speaking of the future, I wanted to talk to you about time travel. I think you have a time travel device or something yep. like that? Can you tell us about it? Yes, I, uh, I can. I, uh, I've had it for quite a long time, probably about, I don't know, 25, 28 years. And uh, it's the same, same kind of time travel device that Art Bell got from the same guy. And I remember Art Bell on one of his show, he said that I'm sitting here looking at the time travel device. I have not dared to turn it on yet, he said, but he's looking at it. And this is the same time travel device that I demonstrated on a TV documentary for BBC television in 2003. That television doc documentary was shown in every English speaking country in the world for about a over a billion people. And the thing about this device is that it's not a toy. And uh, the reason I'm saying it's not a toy is because there are people that got the device and started experimenting with it, and they are missing. Wow. They don't, don't know where they went. And um, I, if you want me to, I have it sitting here. I can show it to you in a little bit, but I'd like to explain a few things about it first. Okay. And uh, I'm probably one of, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I know I'm one of the few that have uh, pictorial evidence of time travel, and I can show you that also. I got some pictures sitting here that uh, will explain that. I uh, So, folks, if you're listening to this, just hang in there. We're going to get there. Don't go anywhere. Like in the old days, we used to say, don't turn the dial. Just stay with us. The, um, the time travel device is not a toy. Because I'm going to give you one example. There was one young man that lived at home with his parents. Uh, he was going to college. And he bought the device. He got it, and he went upstairs to his bedroom in the uh, sometime during the day. And uh, in the evening, his mom went up to the bedroom and knocked on the door, and you know, get him down to eat dinner. And he didn't answer, so she opened the door, and there was the time travel, the uh, the black box, the time coil, and the electromagnet sitting in the middle of the bed but he was nowhere to be seen. So she thought, oh, well, he left. You know, that happened quite a bit. So they didn't think more about it. And then the next day, they found out he didn't show up at school either. He would never showed up anywhere. So they now started wondering what happened to him. And they ended up uh, filing a missing person report. The police came out, and you know how they are. You know, they got to have a murderer somewhere if somebody is missing. So they started looking at the parents. What did you do with him? And they told them the story that, you know, he bought a time travel device, and uh, he's been missing. But, and you can imagine how that went over with the police. They say, yeah, yeah sure. And I, yeah. <laughs> I have some... <clears throat> beachfront property in western Nebraska that you can buy too. Mm -hmm. But he never showed up anywhere. And this is um, this is Stephen Gibbs, the guy that made the device that told me that story personally when I was sitting in Omaha 
well, probably 27 years ago now, me and Pat Russ and him was sitting there having dinner and he told this story and several other stories about people that are missing. So yeah, it is not a toy. But when I got it, I kept trying and trying and trying. I couldn't get anything done. N nothing happened. Until I started manipulating my brainwave pattern, slowing it down to about seven cycles a second, the bottom of the alpha range. That's where I started seeing things. And I've had a glimpse and a things from the from the future, I guess I should say, not just in the future, because outside of the physical, you have the future, present, and past. It's all there sitting in the quantum existence as potential for physical creation. That's quantum mechanics, and they backed me up on that one. So what I saw was some of it was a little alarming, but it was in my time. They were, let me break that up a little bit. The first things I saw, that was a little alarming because I was in a different timeline. And that is, and let me explain that. Because everything starts and is created first in the mind. When I started looking for things, I was looking at for things that was familiar in my mind, and that's how I created my future. And I was uh, all about government cover-ups, government corruption. That's where my mind was. I was exposing it on radio shows, and uh, in a little bit later, I ended up with two TV shows I was hosting and producing in Tucson, and I was all over those subjects. So that's what I saw. And then there was an occasion where I, I switched to a more highly spiritual imagination of the future. That's what I, I figured it out. I talked to somebody where I got some good ideas on how to change these things. And now I start seeing other things in the future. And those are good things. Uh, there is one thing that has been sticking with me, and I can't get it out on my timeline, and that is there is two big rocks that I see coming out of the sky, and it, I believe it is hitting the Atlantic Ocean. And when those big rocks... I, I call them rocks. It doesn't sound as bad as asteroids. And when that hit there, it creates a tsunami that washes the coast clean. I've had, I've seen this twice. I just cannot get around it yet. I would like to change the future of this. And I've been working on it, but I haven't been able to do it yet. Though there is some uh, console in it, and that is that, the, by the way, I saw a bunch of people. We're not going to have a big die off of people from, you know, what happened in the last couple of three years. It's, it's, we're not, we're going to be okay for that. But there were one thing that I saw that I think will give us some time between now and that incident that may or may not happen in my timeline, and that is that there were pickup trucks on the road. And they look different than the pickup trucks look now because now you have the, the cab and then it goes down for the windshield and then the hood. These pickup trucks didn't look that way. They had the cab and then they were slammed all the way to the very tip of the nose of the pickup truck. So the whole thing was a windshield, but there were no hood so to speak. And uh, they, there were a lot of them. So I don't think they just came out. There was quite a few of them. And there were regular cars, it's just as we see now. But this is, uh, I observed it twice 
in what I have done and had a look at the future. But beyond that, I I am not worried about the future at all. Have you seen the cyber truck that's coming out by Tesla? Yeah, but it didn't look like that. It was an open bed on the back and then come up to the cab. So it didn't look like the Cybertruck, even though the Cybertruck have that slant in the front. Right. But it, it didn't look like that in the back. Mm. So that's not the one. And uh, I, I guess now there is one company that has one of those on the dis. They're planning to put it out, but uh, they're not available yet. So I'm sure it's going to take a few years before we get to that point. And that's why I've kind of been saying to people that if it was me, I wouldn't live on the coast. And I, I, I don't even know why I talk about this because now we give it more energy, but it is an alert for people. That's the only thing I can say. But also, we're going to have some interesting things coming up with AI. And uh, there will be a time in between when AI will seem to run the show. And the people are just kind of riding back seat with it. But they, humans will not be done away. They, we are going to be in charge in the future because we will end up working with AR side by side. Another thing is that there is going, if I am right, there will be two classes of people. One that will be organic like you and me right now. And then there will be a class, especially the ones that have done something that I consider a little, maybe a little ignorant over the last two or three years. Uh, you know, we're on YouTube here, so we got to be a little careful. But those will be enhanced to the point where they will have a um, immediate access because of the substance that they have in the body, they have immediate access to the to uh, the internet. If they want information, all they have to do is to think a question, and the mind attaches the internet, look up the answer, and bring them the answer, and it could take anything from a nothing to maybe a second, and they'll have the answer. Those will be the technicians. They will be the ones that is building stuff. They, they, they will be extremely brilliant people, but it is tricky. There is challenges with it that uh, I'm not so sure I want to go into because we are going to be a little careful. But some of the a lot of them will take the chance of having that ability, even though they may know there's going to be challenges. Do you think that that will uh, make a person be able to be immortal? Immortal? Mm -hmm. uh, let me answer that in two different ways. First of all, um, I think about Time Magazine, I think about two, three years ago, they had on the front page there was a picture of a baby. And it said the title of the picture was the first person that would live to the age of 200 is alive today. Wow. So we are going to 200. And that is because of anti-aging uh, mechanics as well as nutrition and things. I am doing a... Uh, a, an anti-aging program that seems to work for me. I, uh, I, uh, I'm 77, and uh, I work 
I don't know, 12, 16 hours a day, and I got more energy than anybody I know. And I've never really been sick in my life, so that could maybe also have something to do with it. But there is a way where you can actually stop the aging process. And in fact, I wrote a book on that. This is how the spiritual science, higher conscious thinking, and how to access the universal consciousness. In there, I explain what I do and what other people do, because I researched this quite a bit, and I found some very old people. Uh, the oldest guy that is verified by his government and also New York Times, the, the, uh, the newspaper, as well as uh, there's other newspapers that's written about it because they went and researched it. That guy died from an accident at 256. Li Xing Yuan. You can uh, Google him. Uh, Google uh, or you search for the 256-year-old man, and you get all kinds of writing about it because the government verified on, uh, I know of two or three different times, the military records show that he was born in 1670 something. And that makes him 256 years old. So uh, that is real. I also found a Ethiopian farmer that is still alive. He's 160. And then there are people in the Middle East that uh, one uh, person from uh, Iran, the government verified his age too, and he, he died at 170 something. So these things happen. They just don't live like we do. And uh, they probably never set foot in a McDonald's in their life. <laughs> yep. I'm quite sure of it. <laughs> but. Well this is real. It can be done. And it is very simple because science figured out what causes aging and death. Let me take 45 seconds and explain how that works. Sure. Because <clears throat> the major reason for the aging and death is the shortening of the telomeres at the end of the chromosomes inside your every cell of the body. Because when a cell replicates itself, every time that it does, the end of the chromosome gets a little shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until there's nothing left. And then the end of the chromosome starts fraying and the cell will no longer be able to use the chromosome to engage the genetic code so it cannot replicate itself and you get stuck with old cells in the body, you get more and more of them and you end up being old and die. So there is this enzyme that we produce in the body. And there were three doctors in uh, 2009 that got the Nobel Prize for discovering this enzyme that reverses the aging process and that you can go to the Nobel Committee's website, go to 2009, and scroll down to medical submissions and read the papers. You're going to love it because there they explain how this aging process works and how it can be stopped. They showed that they were able to stop it. And I am using, uh, there's... There is a pharmaceutical or nutraceutical out there that's called TA-65. It's said to reverse the aging process. Uh, I've heard some people say, yeah, it works for me, and others, most people say, no, it doesn't work. But I'm doing as close as I can to what this 256-year-old man did. I, uh, I'm using Chinese herbs. And... I have, a, there's a lot of medical research showing that the herbs astragalus will either lengthen or stop the shortening of the telomeres at the end of the chromosomes, if it's taken in the large doses. There is another, uh, I take about, I don't know, 
I take so many supplements that it's probably, it feels like a light lunch, you know. <laughs> but this is real. It can be done. And if you're 19 years old right now and you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, you don't care about aging. But you get parents. Tell them about it because they would want to know. And in that book, I uh, explain exactly what I do. And the uh, and if you want to know more, just get in touch with me. I'm very available to everybody that get that book. I will, if you email me, I will talk to you. I'll, uh, you'll be amazed how few people take advantage of that, but I'm available. What do you know about the doctor who proved the existence of the soul? Oh, I got a little note on that one I want to tell you. Uh, there was, a, in, uh, I think it's 2000, and, no, 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 1901, there was a doctor, that his name was Duncan McDougall, and he was uh, working at a hospital on the East Coast, and he wanted to prove the existence of the soul. And what he did, he found over a period of time, he found six people that was very close to dying. They expected them to die at any time. And he put the bed with them in it on industrial scale. So the four scales, one for each leg of the, of the hospital bed. And they was watched 24 seven. And the weight was constant. The bed, the bedding, and them in it was constant. But at the time the person died, right after, very short time after, the bed suddenly became about 21 grams or about three quarters of an ounce, just a little bit lighter. It happened for every one of them. Actually, my note says it was 2007 they did that. So you can research this uh, because it's, it's on the internet. It's available. And uh, the question is, if the bed got lighter right at the moment or slightly after they died, what happened? What left the body? On the first and the second and the few, he didn't say much about it. He just continued his research. But after the sixth one, that the same thing had happened, he said, and he, he wrote a paper on it, he said, six times in a row is not coincidence. There's something that happens here. And he determined, he made the determination that the person died, the soul leaves, and the person becomes lighter. So he says, I proved the existence of the soul. I have a question on that because the soul is entirely spiritual. But there is another thing that is attached to the body, and that is the astral vehicle. The astral vehicle has an affinity to the body and earth. So an astral traveler will tell you that if you are traveling in the astral vehicle, you float, but you float by thinking yourself to somewhere, you know, wherever you're going. But if you sit perfectly still, you very slowly sink down towards the ground. That means that it could have an affinity to gravity or the earth. But I don't know. Uh, uh, Dr. McDougall was a pretty sharp guy, so I, I'm leaving it open. Maybe that was it. Maybe he found that the soul actually expresses a form of weight, and it left. That's amazing. Yeah, 
You know, we got sidetracked and you never showed us your time travel device. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, we can do that. I, um, I have it sitting here so we can, uh, I'm going to get that. Okay, let's see. This. Here is, there's a black box. That is one of the components. There's two more, but I'm going to show it to you. Here is the black box. I'm going to see if I can get it a little closer so you can see what it says. This is, they call, oh, it's backwards. Here we go. This is the well. This is actually not for the purpose of time travel or anything like that. It is more for the purpose of using this device as a uh, radionics device. Let's say that you have somebody that needs uh, help with this body somehow, or, or let's take it, let's not go there. Let's say that you have a field that is infested with uh, bugs. They've been doing a lot of this over in England, and it works excellent. So you get one of those bugs, and you put it in the well, and you kill it first. You put it in the well, and you turn the knobs until you, you turn, oh, I got to look at it. Okay, you turn, first you got to turn it on, it's the on switch, and then you uh, turn the others on, and then you turn the knob a little bit, and you there's a stick, there's a stick plate here. And you turn the knob until your finger sticks, and it just won't move anymore just like you do on a uh, radionic computer. And you keep turning a little bit, rubbing it, rubbing it, turning, until the finger sticks and it just won't get it to move. And it will do that. Now, when you get to that point, you just leave it on. That bug in there will somehow send a message to the rest of the bugs in that field through the quantum field or the quantum existence, the bugs will get the message that, oh, there's death here, and they leave. There are radionic practitioner, uh, practitioners in England. They have been doing this, and they've been doing it very successfully. Now, you said there are other components to this. There are other boxes. Yeah, no, it's not box, but uh, I'll, uh, but we do the same thing with um, time travel also. You tune this, these knobs to your frequency, and you keep rubbing the plate until the finger sticks. Then you got your frequency in the time ship inside. Now let me show you what uh, what mm. else is. What is the power supply for this? Uh, I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. There is, um, okay, yes, there we go. Uh, it, it's plugged in the wall. And this is one of the early models that uh, it looks kind of crude, but uh, you plug it in the wall and the, uh, the electric cord goes into the black box first. And it comes out of the black box and going through this electromagnet. And this magnet is very strong. I could, um, I mean, if I put the, this magnet next to the computer screen, I'd be gone. You wouldn't be able to see me anymore. And probably destroy the screen. And uh, if I put this, this down, plugged it in the wall, and I turn all the buttons on, I could put a little, let's say, uh, a coin this far away. And when I turn it on, boing, it's going to go right to the magnet. And uh, it, it'll pull just about anything to it. What this does, I hold it 
like this against the solar plexus. At the same time, I will have put this around my head, right at the point where the pituitary inside the head is, and my third eye in front. When I have this around my head, and this at my solar plexus, and I have tuned the black box to my frequency, which actually takes a little while. You got to keep turning it very little. It could take 15 minutes to tune yourself to it or more. But when you do that, sit there and hold it and go into a meditative state. And bring your brainwave pattern down. I bring it, I, I'm aiming for, I was told that 7.4 cycles a second is kind of a magic number. But uh, you know how you may not get that, but you can get close. I, I can bring my brainwave pattern down to seven just in about three or four seconds, well, five seconds. And that's easy because, I, you know, I train myself to manipulate my mind pretty well, and then sit there and wait. What I forgot to say is that before you start doing this, condition the mind, visualize where you want to go and what you want to see. And now whether I actually go anywhere physically, or if it's mentally, I don't know. I have never gotten this to work when there's someone else around because there's always something else in your mind. There's a distraction there. I've always been alone. So it sounds like to me this is a time travel device for your consciousness. I think more so, yes, except for that guy that just disappeared and uh, never showed up again. Uh, evidently, something happened to him where it was more than just mental. And uh, to revisit that one, uh, chances are maybe he wanted to go back to, let's say, when they built the pyramids in Egypt or something, and he left the time travel device on the bed and he wasn't able to get back. Usually there is a safety valve in the universe, and that is all you have to do is to think yourself back and you'll come back. But obviously for him, it, maybe he didn't even know or didn't think about it, but it didn't work for him and a few others that have. In fact, uh, there is a lady, a very good friend of mine in Omaha, her name is Patricia Dress, R-E-S-S. She's written several books on time travel, and she's got all kinds of stories of people that are missing that she researched and found them. She talked to some of their families and said, oh, yeah, he's gone. Now, these glimpses of the future you had, they were made while using this device? In the beginning, they were. I don't use it anymore. Now I just do it with the mind, which I... You find you don't in need In here, it. I explain how to do that in the book. You find you don't need that anymore. You can do it. I, I don't need it anymore. But the thing is, I got to come clean on this. I'm not that good at it. I can't make it work all the time. Um, once in a while, and I haven't done a lot with it lately, but uh, there have been times when I sit and I try and try and nothing happens. But then again, there are other times when I see things. One of the topics that we talk about lately is that the possibility of living in a simulation like the Matrix. Yeah. If that was true, I wonder then if this time machine that you have has any effect on that? Well, I think it can. But um, 
I didn't explain the, the biggest reason for this happening is the, the electromagnet. The electromagnet set up a big electromagnetic bubble around us, which through the time chip is tuned to your frequency and the gate through the pituitary on out to the quantum. So this is something that I, I asked uh, the inventor on it, and he it's probably pretty, uh, he didn't want to explain a lot, but he explained the concept, so I can understand that. But how this, uh, oh gosh, now I got sidetracked. What did you ask again? <laughs> Well, I was talking about the matrix oh, yeah. or the matrix simulation theory. And if, if it's real, would this machine have any effect on that? I think it can bridge some things within the matrix because we know science has proven that this is working on the principles of a holographic expression, what we have around us. Quantum mechanics has gone that far. And then we have the physicist, James Gates. He says that if we go deep in the equations explaining the fabric of space and the, uh, the particles, we find computer language. We didn't put it there. And it's too organized to be there by accident and intelligence put it there. So now we know there's a computer language. If there's computer language, there gotta be a computer program. If there's a computer program, we have to have a computer somewhere. Question is then, who's sitting at the computer? And I think I found him. I'm gonna point to him, it's you. So we all create our own simulation. Yes, we do. In our own existence, we create our own simulation, but it interacts through a predetermined quantum existence where things are commonly available to interact with and build on. That sounded good. I, I don't even know what I said, but it sounded okay. Uh, th this is my express, um, impression of it. So if this machine can alter things in there, I think it can, especially within time. Because outside of the physical, well, it's not totally true. In the lower astral worlds, you still have present moment pretty much only. But when you get up into the higher vibrations, past, present, and future is sitting there. All you have to do is to think of something in the future, and it will pop out, and you can see it, view it, participate in it, and experience it. And when you quit thinking about it, it goes away. How much experience do you have astral traveling? I've done quite a bit of it. What's the best way to get out of the body and travel? There are two ways that I think is... Uh, it's, it's really simple. It's very simple, actually. I didn't say easy because there's a little bit of practice on your part. And one of them is... When you lay down in the bed, try to slow your mind down so it's almost so you're sleeping. And this is good to try right after you wake up in the morning because your brain waves are still down there in the deep alpha somewhere. And visualize yourself rolling out of bed, standing up and turning around looking at yourself. I must have tried that every day. Well, every evening before I went to bed, I did it. Oh, for at least a month. It may have been a month and a half, or maybe even more. I forget what it was just so long ago. But 
and nothing come easy for me. I just had to practice a lot. But rolling out of bed, standing up, turning around and looking at yourself. And there will be a day, if you keep doing it, there will be a day when you're going to say to yourself, holy chocolate, did I die? Because you can see yourself in the bed and here you're standing next to the bed. That day will come if you keep practicing. And uh, besides that, there's another one. It's a really simple exercise and it, it could take about 30 to 45 seconds. And if you want to, we can do it right now so the viewers can actually participate in this. All right, I want to let everybody know that if you're driving a car or yeah. operating heavy equipment or anything else that could be dangerous, obviously you don't want to do it right now. You want to wait till you go home and you're in a safe place, then come back to the video and try it. Yep. If you're in your car listening to this, turn it off. You don't even want to listen. You know, for those of you that want to participate in this, just do it safe. But just visualize yourself wherever you sit right now, in your living room, on the couch, or in the kitchen table, just sit right there in the chair. If you have a table in front of it, don't matter. Now, close your eyes, see yourself sitting in that chair. And uh, I'm going to talk through this so there's no dead air. <laughs> and just close your eyes. See yourself sitting in the chair. Before you get started, I know this may seem like a simple question, but when you are seeing yourself sitting in the chair, are you imagining that you're standing behind yourself and looking at yourself from behind or from the front? Oh, no, no. You... You visualize yourself sitting in the chair. Where, wherever you are, that, that's where you want to visualize. You know what you look like. You know what you, where you are. You're right there. Okay. So now, close your eyes and see yourself in the chair. Slowly, in your mind's eye, raise up out of the chair and take three steps forward. When you get to the third step, turn around and look at yourself in the chair. You know what you look like. You know what your hair is like. You, you know what your clothes are. You know the details. Do you have shoes on or are you barefoot? See yourself in that chair. You're looking at yourself. And then turn around again. So you turn the back on yourself in the chair and back up into yourself and sit down in the chair again. And that's it. Now, if you keep practicing this, there will be a day. When you step out of the chair, three step forward, turn around, and by golly, your eyes are open. You can see yourself in the chair. You'd be surprised how simple it can be. There is an awful lot of people that have had this experience. There are, uh, I do shows, and I do interviews and stuff, and I do I we have a mastermind session on Sundays, and I must have five to ten people in the mastermind sessions all the time. They say, "Yeah, I, I do ask to travel," and they talk about their experiences. This is not special to me or anybody. It is possible for people to learn this, and when you learn it. It is a totally new world opening up to you, literally.
and new world. If you're in Florida, in a matter of a few seconds, you can go and visit your brother in California. And you can see him. He can't see you, most likely. Or you can go to Paris, France. Get up in the Eiffel Tower on the restaurant there. That's a phenomenal restaurant there in the Eiffel Tower. Or you could go to the moon. Before you do that, get yourself a map of the moon. And find the Schrodinger crater. The Schrodinger, S-C-H-R-O-D and then so on. Schrodinger crater. Look at the moon as it looks from the earth, so you know where it is. And then get out and go there. You're going to be amazed what you will see. You will see a building that looks just like a swastika that they used in Germany. But the the angles of the uh, of the of the arms are opposite of what they used in Germany, because this is an old spiritual symptom. This building is over a mile long. It's huge, and in nineteen about forty three, possibly forty two, and the Hanebu two was built by the uh, Germans. In, uh, in, uh, in, in Germany, they went there. They flew around the moon and mapped it, and they found this building and fell in love with it. And when they came back, they decided, we're going to rebuild that. So that's where the German base is today, or at least one of them. There's probably more. Hmm. But once you get out, Get out of the body, go have a look. That'll be a fun experience. Definitely. <laughs> I, I can see something in your eye, Jeff. <laughs> You're thinking about this. Well, I haven't figured out yet how to astral travel, but once I do, that will be one of the places that I'm going to take a look at. Yeah. Now, you yeah. are speaking yeah. of your mastermind class. Oh, I don't know if it's a class, but your mastermind is that part of your weekly show? No, uh, we do it on Sundays. Uh, there's a great group of people that we have got together. And uh, and uh, we mastermind things that we want to happen. You see, the definition of the mastermind is when, when two or more minds are united in harmony, they create a third mind which has the potential mind power of the two or more of them multiplied by each other. So, if a thousand people would get together and concentrate on one thing and focus in one direction and have one intention for something to happen, now you have the mind power of a million minds, and that is really powerful. We don't have a thousand people, but... What we do get good results. We have, there are times when we seem like we create out of seemingly nothing, but it shows up in our lives. Would you say that you are manifesting? Yep. For, uh, for people in the group, there are the healings that have happened. There is uh, abundance that is... <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but I think a couple of years ago, we were talking about mailbox money. And uh, I don't know, this is a new term for a lot of people. Mailbox money, that's a, something that money that just shows up in your mailbox and you have no clue where it came from. Sounds like a good thing. Yeah, and there was about a week before Christmas, and this happened to a lady. She found an envelope in the mailbox and there was cash. 
And I, I, I don't know, you know, I have to believe her. So uh, there's some goofy stuff happening and abundance for people that is showing up in their life. And uh, especially healings that they do it themselves. And we add the momentum to their thoughts in doing it. Well, if somebody wants to join your mastermind group, how do they do that? Oh, it's very simple. Just send us an email and I'll send them some information and a link to come and check it out. And uh, send the email to the mastermind connection at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. The the mastermind connection at gmail.com. When are you posting content with Broadcast Team Alpha? Uh, we are on 44 different platforms right now. And uh, we are uh, on YouTube, of course. And we're also on our website, broadcastteamalpha.com. And just about everywhere else out there. And if you go to broadcastteamalpha.com, you can also connect with us through there through the, um, you know, you can send us a message. And if you're there, go into the picture gallery. You're going to have fun there because we got about 5,000 unbelievable pictures of things that should not exist, but it does. How often do you post content? Uh, Once a week? Or? Um, well, the, the shows and the videos goes on there every week. So you got three of those every time. I, I haven't posted many pictures lately, but... There is 113 pages, so, you know, it's just a lot to see, so. Well, if somebody has questions for you, should they leave comments in your videos or email you? Yeah, that's, uh, you can comment on the, on the videos on YouTube or uh, because we monitor that. And, or if they have any special things that is very private, go to Broadcast Team Alpha and send us a message and then we'll get it. Or send an email to the email I just gave you, and you know, the mastermind connection at gmail.com. Do you have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about? Uh, yeah, we, um, we just started uh, uh, doing a uh, video documentary about the moon and Mars, what is really there. And it's going to take another month or two before that's done. But I think that's going to be out because I, I have another uh, video on uh, Amazon that's called Aliens and Agenda 21. And uh, because we, uh, Robert Miles and myself, we did that one. And a Hollywood producer got a hold of it and he spread it everywhere. They must have been gone out to a million people by now. So. Uh, <clears throat> So we're going to have the other uh, video documentary there probably also in a few months. You showed us your book earlier. What is the title of that book again? All right. This is Spiritual Science, Higher Conscious Thinking, and How to Access the Universal Consciousness. And that is on Amazon also. And uh, in here... By the way, we did talk about time travel. In the back, there's a whole chapter on it where I go through what I do. And with some practice, you can do the same thing. Hmm. All right. Before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Positive message? Well, I have one that uh, I would say is the most positive thing I can think of right now, knowing what's going on in the world. People are worried about all kinds of things happening. I am not worried one bit. Because first of all, I have no fear of it. And for the second is that I have designed my future. I have visualized the way I want my future to be. And everybody can do that. They can also visualize into existence what they like their future to be like, and then go back and visit it every day and 
what you're doing, <clears throat> you're placing it in the future and then go back and visit it every day and you solidify the timeline to that thing in the future so you get drawn up that timeline. It doesn't matter what's to the right or to the left, you are going down this timeline and don't get distracted with all these war stories and everything that is happening on the side. I don't care about it. I don't even listen most of the time. But I am concentrating on where I'm going. And this is something everybody could do. And another thing is, in order to get that to work so that you have a family unit together is have a weekly meeting with your family, have a brainstorming session, decide what you want as a family, and then place that in the future. And every one of you go back and forth and visit it. You get drawn up that timeline, and this is very powerful. It works. I have done it for a long time, and that's why all the, the garbage that has been happening for the last two or three years did not affect me at all. I couldn't care less. Augie, thank you for your message, and thank you for being my guest. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I love talking with you because uh, we're having fun. It's always great to have you back, and we will have you back again. Well, we'll, we'll think of something to talk about. Mm -hmm. All right, take care and have a great rest of your evening. Yep. In the words of Spark, live long and prosper. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.